The John Deere 54 blade is one of my favorite attachments, but it has one frustrating problem. It turns painfully slow. But don't worry, this small valve is the fix you've been waiting for. Today I will show you how easy it is to install and the massive difference that it makes across multiple attachments. First, we need to understand what is causing the issue, and that is the hydraulic cylinder in the rear of the tractor that is usually used for lifting and lowering the deck or operating a three-point if you have one of those installed. This rear cylinder is on the same hydraulic circuit that is used to turn the blade or tip the bucket on a loader. So while you're using the blade or a loader, this cylinder back here isn't doing anything except for acting as a parasite, robbing power from that hydraulic circuit. So what we need to do is install this little valve so we can shut off the flow of the hydraulic fluid to the cylinder and stop it from robbing all that power. You have a few different options when it comes to where you can order your valve from. You can buy a kit from Auxiliary Hydraulics that is a little bit more expensive than I wanted to go with, but I know that it's a great kit. And you can also just buy the valve from Amazon and I'll have links in the description for that valve if you wanna go that route. I decided to go with this valve from Save Small Engines on eBay. It was right in the middle of the price range and also it ships out of Minnesota, so that's super convenient for me. Whenever I'm working with the hydraulic system, I just like to come up to the levers and give them a quick little wiggle, and that just releases any pressure that is built up in the hydraulic system. Even though we release the pressure from the system, when I loosen up those fittings, I'm still probably gonna drip some fluid, so I'm gonna put a catch pan underneath. You can use any sort of drain pan for this. I just like the long rectangular one for this because it's gonna give me the most amount of coverage up next to the tire. And then since we are probably gonna lose a little bit of fluid, we're definitely gonna to wanna to check the hydraulic fluid level once we're done with this install. One more quick tip before we get started. If you turn this pin vertically, you can slide this whole rock shaft back a little bit. And that gives you more access to your fittings back here. Now we can take the hose off the fitting and I'll try to stay out of your way as much as possible, but it's kind of a tight area down here, so it's gonna be hard to do. You need a 5 8 inch wrench to get this off of there and hopefully it won't be too hard to loosen up. There we go. Nice and easy. Don't wanna get my nice glove all dirty. Just like that. And you see releasing that pressure reduces the amount of fluid you're gonna get out of there. I cleaned up around this fitting a little bit, and now I'm going to use a 14 millimeter wrench to get this out. On my 322, I used a 9 16 but it just seems like this one, the 14 millimeter fits a little bit better. And hopefully we can get in a good position to Swing that out of the way and loosen this up. They just do not give you very much room to work in here. All right, there we go. Get that loosened up. I just kind of got to figure out different ways to position the wrench to get it out of there. And then just get that fitting taken out like that. There's a little bit of old thread sealant built up in the threads here. So just take a real fine pick and clean that out of there. And then I'll just take a rag and just try to clean up around these threads as well. Can also take that same pick and just try and get as much of this cleaned out of here. It's not really in the threads here, so I'm not too concerned. Just try and get it as clean as possible. For this particular valve, the lever is going to be in the way of threading it into the cylinder. So we just have to take this lever off first which is just this one screw right here, no big deal. And it can only go back on one way, so no need to worry about messing it up when you have to go to put it back together. 
I'm gonna use this Loctite pneumatic and hydraulic thread sealant. You want to just put it three quarters of the way around the threads, being very careful not to get the sealant anywhere near that first thread to reduce the chances of the sealant getting into the system. And then we can just thread that in there. But before we go too far, I'm just going to thread the elbow into the end of this, just getting it snug, just as kind of a dry fit. And that will just help for when we are tightening the valve, we know where this fitting is gonna end up facing because we need this fitting to be pointing down towards this hose. So we wanna get that decently tight and now we can tighten up the fitting. And I am using a 21 millimeter wrench to do that. A 3 16 will also work. I found that the side of the valve that has the lever on it is actually a little bit wider. So the 3 16 inch doesn't really fit on there. And that's why I opted to go for the 21 millimeter. So you can use the wrench all the way around the valve while tightening it. All right, now we have our valve tight enough and there's still enough clearance for that to shut. So there's that. We can now put that valve back on or the lever back on and then screw it back in place just like that. Now that's working. Now we can take and twist this back out and we can put some thread sealant on this. Once again, just being very careful to not get it too close to the edge. And you don't need to go all the way around because it'll spread out as you thread it in. There we go, got a little opening there. And thread it in. gonna try and get it to be facing down it's just a little tricky to maneuver the wrench in here and it's okay if it tightens up that valve a little bit more also And there we go, pointed right down towards the hose, just like we need it. I tried to uh, adjust the cylinder a little bit by pushing in on it and it squirted some fluid out. So if you see a little bit of difference in here, that's why. But now we need to connect our hydraulic hose to the fitting here, which is gonna be a little tight because we extended the fitting out further with the valve, of course, but it should still be plenty long enough to connect. We just got to work it on over here. But of course it's a uh, flared fitting, so it's going to have to be exactly lined up before it wants to thread on there, right?
but just like that goes on there and uh the hose isn't too tight just so you know and then we can just tighten that fitting down And then when we get to the point when we're getting a little tight, I just like to hold on to the fitting while I'm tightening this, just so you know you're not putting too much stress on this whole assembly here. You can just hold it nice and securely with this wrench while you tighten up that flare nut fitting. And that's all it takes to install. Now we can go test it out. Oh, just real quick, I figured I should show you that we're still sitting really good on our hydraulic fluid. We barely lost any, so no surprise there. All right, I'm going to run a test now where I'll have it pivoted to the right like this. I'll swing it all the way to the left and then back all the way to the right. And I'll set a timer to see how long it takes. And then I'll shut that valve and then we'll rerun the test and see how much faster it is with the valve shut off. So with the valve open, that blade turned slow and it was not smooth at all. So let's close this valve and try it again. That is a crazy difference in the speed that that blade turns and also how smoothly it turns once you shut off that rear hydraulic cylinder. That is gonna make working with this blade so much faster and so much nicer. And not only that, this fix is gonna work for any other attachment that uses that second hydraulic circuit, just like this little buck loader. You can see that difference that it makes in the speed in which you can tilt that bucket down and back up, which once again is going to make it so much faster to work with. And now this is only going to matter once you get that 54 blade actually mounted up to the tractor. And if you need help with that, I got a video for you right here. And if you want to learn about any of the other attachments that John Deere made for the 300 series, I got a playlist for you right here. And I look forward to seeing you on the next one.